Hey guys, Volessi here. Today is the day that we're going to talk about Foreign Company. They are one of the mercenary NA2 sectorials that you can play in Infinity the game. They came out in the most recent expansion, um, the uh, Daedalus Falls. Today's the 26th of July 2019, so obviously YouTube videos get old and things will change in the future, but today we're going to have a look at Foreign Company. And as usual, I'll be doing the strategy, the review, the tactics, the breakdown, the profile by profile. We'll go through the whole sectorial. This is a sectorial which has struck me as very interesting since they first came out. Um, they're very much about the A-team, including Hannibal and many of the characters from Aristia the game coming into play. They seem to be a mix of mostly pan Oceania and Nomad Troopers. They are this luxury uh, mercenary group that only the rich and powerful can afford to send into battle. Um, but they have some interesting character. I've been thinking about them a lot lately in writing lists, and I did play one game with them, and uh, I felt like uh, more than any other sectorial right now, I wanted to share my thoughts about Foreign Company. Before we get too far into it, um, we have to address the obvious elephant in the room, and that is the power level or the potential of this sectorial as perceived by most people. That uh, ranking that we did the other day, where I got you guys to send in your thoughts about which sectorials in Infinity are strong and weak, we collectively rated Foreign Company as the third worst sectorial in Infinity the game, uh, and there are 36 options to choose from. So if you're third from the bottom, uh, you can't really be too powerful, and uh, unfortunately that is relatively true of Foreign Company, and we'll talk about some of the reasons why in this video. Having said that, let's take a more optimistic, positive outlook on it. Let's talk about some of the reasons why you might want to play them anyway. Well, first of all, they're a really cool character for faction. They allow you to play Valkyrie and Hannibal and uh, other characters, Laxmi, in there uh, that other sectorals don't really allow you to, to play. You can take some of the quite powerful and high ballistic skill pan Oceania units, but also some of the tricky Nomad units with smoke and hacking and things like that. So you may find that interesting. Secondarily, I think that with games design in general, there are a lot of people out there who like to try and win with the stuff that's considered underpowered. Now, I don't know if Corvus Spelli are that smart. I don't really feel that they've actually deliberately gone and made some sectorials weaker just to cater for people who like to try and be the underdog and have a handicap. But for those of you who play uh, Blizzard games, for example, if you've tried Hearthstone, I remember watching a, a video from a developer talking about the fact that one of the reasons why they didn't make some of the weaker cards um, more up to scratch and more powerful and try and reduce the gap between rich and poor and strong and weak was that they knew that a lot of their player base liked trying to include these lesser powerful cards, or in our case in Infinity, units and profiles, into their decks or to their lists. Uh, to try and see how well they could do with them. And hey, if you play Foreign Company or Druze or French Ariadne or other other sectorials that people seem to think are weak, and then you crush with them and you smash everybody, your ability with the game, it's so much harder for them to question you, right? It's, it's less about luck and less about lists and more about how good you are when you manage to do that. So you may be attracted to that idea. I like um, the idea with Foreign Company of trying to just do very... Uh, do a really good job of analyzing them and finding some little tricks here and there and ideas that may work uh, better than the the actual list or the options themselves suggest and we'll talk about that in this video of some ways that we might be able to try and squeeze a little bit of extra value out of them to try and get them up to speed but in general no they they lack some of the overpowered stuff that other factions have we're not going to find any jammers you know we're not going to find uh, any fatality level 2 in there. We're not going to find any link teams that uh, are both super powerful and really cheap at the same time. That's not really going to be the case. And we can't cherry prick pick every single profile for every single role that we need from uh, troops that are really, really strong. There are not lots of very good wildcard options like there are in Deshaart, and the list goes on. The availability of a lot of good units are like 1 or 2 or, or so on. Um, so yeah we are going to struggle a bit. But join me as we roll up our sleeves and dig into this very interesting sectorial called Foreign Company. Let's go. Let's have a look. We're just going to jump straight into it left from right. So let's have a look at Avicenna. 
the mercenary doctor, which uh, is one of our options here. Note that uh, they haven't forced us to use Avicenna. We have the choice between her or the Dictari, as far as doctors are concerned. Uh, technically, there is a brawler doctor, but you would never take a 20-point doctor with only willpower 12, especially consider it, considering that it has no other abilities. But Avicenna. A lot of people sing her praises and find her really, really good because she is uh, effectively the uh, most effective uh, doctor in the game with Willpower 15 and Doctor Plus. So you make your doctor check and it's an 18 or less to pass, which is a very, very reliable doctor. I think that she is not really worth the 27 points a lot of the time. And I know that might be a bit controversial, but the thing is when you're paying 27 points for a model like this, you're going to want it to do a lot of other jobs as well. As a specialist, you're still going 6-2 speed out there. That can be nice, but you're not exactly starting out in the midfield, and it's like any other specialist that has to move around. Um, if you've got a model out there already with infiltration, that's going to be your button, button presser. Avicenna can do it, but for 27 points, you need to really get more value out of it for that. When I think about models like, say, Mary Problems, uh, Mary is able to do a lot of hacking and specialist work, but also do fighting because of her SMG and her ODD. And that's why she's costed the way she is. With Avicenna, it's just about the reliability of doctoring, really. You've got NWI and a combi rifle, flash pulse at whip 15, so there are these little, um, little perks here and there. Armor 2, BTS 3, I mean, there's a reason why she costs 27 points. But to get 27 points uh, worth out of her game after game it is tough. And I, th and I don't want people to be blindsided to the fact that, yes, you know, there is the potential there to get that good value out of her. But by, t by spending 27 point model, uh, by spending 27 points on a model that needs to fulfill this role, you are denying yourself the opportunity to have more orders, for example. We go over to the Dactari, 14 points. Now, worse doctor, but we're saving what? another 14 so it's another 13 points out of that for 13 points you can get a whole nother cheerleader in your army so that's an entire regular order which um, makes a big difference in a game of infinity over three turns you're spending those orders each turn on a very powerful model that's very efficient whereas if you've decided to take avicenna you may have less orders to to fuel into the things that really matter I don't think she's a terrible choice. I mean, I'm not going to uh, criticize that heavily people who want to take her, but I feel like the Dactari is going to be better in most of your lists. Just because this is a sectorial that has a lot of cubes, you know. If your Orc Trooper falls flat and you need a Doctor, um, will, Willpower 13 is going to get the job done the majority of the time. What's that? 65%, I think. Yeah, about 65%. And if you fail it, you spin the Command Taker and you re-roll it. Um, there may be some people out there who've just had such bad luck with Doctors that they've wasted all their command tokens and the model still died and they've thought, nah, screw it, I'm just going to go take Avicenna because I don't want that to happen to me ever again. I feel like that's taking the wrong view statistically and strategically in terms of how uh, the concept of expected value works. Just because something happens to you that's really unlucky doesn't mean that you should change a winning strategy for the long term. So my recommendation is Dactari. Um, she can't be linked in the same way that the Avicenna can. We'll talk a little bit about Avicenna's link team options when we discuss the Kaplans and Orc Troopers. But uh, although she's solid, she's expensive, and really you need to be evaluating her in the context of the entire list before doing that. Brawlers. Availability 1, no wildcard, no link team options whatsoever. We look at this and we, we go, what the hell, Corvus Belli? Uh, why are brawlers even in this sectorial? When you look at what other sectorials can do with brawlers, I mean, so many sectorials can take them now, and there are so many models out for them available at this point. Why, why, why can foreign company not even take one of them in another link team? This is actually something that would, would, would make Foreign Company, you know, a mid-tier kind of sectorial rather than like bottom three, is if you just said, okay, up to one brawler can wildcard. That way you'd be able to take an Orc Trooper team and have the, the points cost reduced by having a cheap brawler in there. You could take the multi-sniper and chuck it into a Harris like you do in Akari. I mean, I've been playing Akari for a fair bit and using that multi-sniper with MSV2 and some of my Harris teams... And he's not overpowered, he's just decent. 
Also, Deshart Company can pop him in there with the Bounty Hunters, and he's in a five-man link team. And, I mean, even that's not a, a overpowered, but we compare the Sectorial to Deshart, and it's just it's just sad, really, that um, you know there's a missed opportunity here. If you're going to take Brawlers, it's usually just going to be because you really want that MSV2 Sniper, or you want the Assault Hacker in there for some reason, but all of these Brawlers are overcosted. You're not going to want the Brawler Lieutenant because you're paying 16 points for a Whip 12 model. Whereas over here, you look at the Securitates, you're paying uh, 14 po 13 points sorry, for a Whip 14 model that's going to be Lieutenant. It's just no comparison. Um, so sadly, Brawlers really get left behind in this particular sectorial. Clockmaker, you pay 18 points for a Whip 15 model. The only time I'd really bother with a Clockmaker is if I'm playing missions where engineering can be important. Uh, for example, maybe hunting party or um, a mission where you expect you might get jammed or something like that and you really need to uh, bring them out of that isolated state. You might be running an Iguana tag. This is the only tag the Sectorial can take and um, I'm going to talk about the Iguana later but I don't particularly like the Iguana. However, you may disagree and you may really like the Iguana and if you are gonna be running them, you may need an engineer for them and that's when the Glockmaker um, comes to play. But most of the time, I don't really see the need for him. Um, he's a bit expensive. The CSUs, now this is, this is an interesting feature of the Sectorial and uh, these guys become effectively line troopers because you can take up to three of them and all three of them can count as Securitates and this is how you're going to be able to have a defensive link team that has a bit of utility and a bit of diversity in, in it. So most of the foreign company lists that I would be playing would include the CSUs. The best profile in my opinion is this guy here, the 12 point specialist operative rifle plus light shotgun nanopulsar. So the great thing here is that at short range you've got the light shotgun, at long range you've got the rifle. Blister Skill 12 is above average for a model of this uh, points cost at 12 points. Uh, that's actually really, really nice. Whip 12 is the weakness, um, but a lot of the time you're not going to need it. Um, although you're a specialist operative, that's great, but they're going to be joining a Securitate link team, so you can use the Securitate willpower for your specialist, maybe a paramedic or hacker, to do the button pressing when you move out. The CSU's coming with nanopulses is nice as well because enemy models trying to engage your link team to try and surprise them, to jump on them, get punished by that nanopulsal with the extra burst bonus. Uh, on top of all of this, you've got metachemistry level 1, and if it's on 3 CSU's, you're going to be able to roll up um, a decent roll more often than not um, with at least one of them. So if we look at um, metachemistry 1, what are the roles you're going to be wanting? Well, immunity total, fantastic. Um, 6 Sensible 2, well that's already going to be there. NWI, fantastic. Um, Dogged, also very, very nice. So if you get one of your CSUs rolling up one of those abilities, that can enhance the link team quite a lot. So try and take three of them. Imagine you've got a CSU group with the Securitates and it's turn three of the game and you've lost some of your powerful units, but you need to make a run for it. That CSU specialist operative with total immunity is going to be able to ignore all of those flash pulses. It's going to be able to get in there and have a much better shot of making it to that final objective, which can be a big deal. Or your CSU with NWI might be the point man of the link team moving out, firing that rifle, uh, whereas the Securitate is going to crumble a bit more, especially if you're cornering, um, you know, coming around the corner to go up against, say, a chain rifle. Well, you can block it with your NWI, take that wound, keep the link team intact and going. Um, I also kind of like the boarding shotgun just because you save a single point and at close range the boarding shotgun is better than the light shotgun and if you've already got two specialist operatives in there you may not need that um, that third one. The other guys um, wouldn't recommend as much breaker rifle, combi rifle, that kind of thing because I really feel that the, the securitates are going to be filling, fulfilling the roles that uh, those guns are going to be bringing. Cube Jaeger, Mercenary Recoverers. Um, Airborne Infiltration is decent, Shock Immunity is decent, but again, uh, Shock Immunity matters more on models that have NWI or uh, are planning to get doctored after they go down, whereas the Cube Jaegers, you can get, usually going to be out in the midfield somewhere where it's alone and isolated. Monofilament Close Combat Weapon is cool, but it's got no surprise attack whatsoever. It's only got CC14, doesn't come up very much. SMG EMETA for 18 points. You're still paying 0.5 SWCs though, presumably for the monofilament close combat weapon. Uh, paramedic is nice for being a specialist out in the midfield. I've never really loved these guys though. Um, paramedic, it's just a bit iffy. Um, 
you get value out of it in those few games where he comes across to a model that's isolated, well, not so much isolated, but cut off from enemy enemy troops to revive it. It's just not going to happen all that often, though. So, yeah, I'd prefer to go for the Akali, because the Akali is going to bring good ballistic skill, good armor, and a decent gun, and uh, is going to be a bit more reliable for its role, you know, dropping down behind enemy lines and shooting things. So it's not bad per se, but my preference is for the Akali. Dictari, we already talked about a nice cheap 14 point specialist that can do the doctoring and you know you use the cube re rolls, you hook up the Zonbot to it, and we're good to go. All right, Hannibal. So he is the really interesting character in this sectorial um, that you can only get by playing foreign companies. So Hannibal um, is an Aristia character. I do not play Aristia, so I don't really know that much about him. But he is interesting, isn't he? The one profile that strikes me as worthwhile and, uh, and, and really uh, of interest the most is this primary one where he's the lieutenant, right? So yes, he can be the chain of command, but I don't think chain of command here is, is the way you want to go because I think it's unlikely that you're going to be using an offensive, aggressive lieutenant elsewhere in the army. Maybe an orc trooper, that might work, but this guy's the really interesting one because he's relatively close to the rest of the profiles in terms of points. And he allows you to bring in Stratagos level 1, which is really very useful. If you're going to be spending that many points on a lieutenant like this, you may as well have that additional order going into the pool. And uh, Strategic Deployment allows you to deploy your entire link team further up the field. I can't really see the point in running this guy by himself or with any of the other link teams except for that primary A-team group, which we'll talk about later in this video where he teams up with Valkyrie, Laxmi, Senior Masca, and either a Bolt or an Orc Trooper. Just quickly, two Bolts plus Hannibal, you're going to get a pretty expensive Harris team that is quite often not going to be able to outshoot um, the really dedicated AROs like the Big Tags, TO Snipers, uh, enemy link teams with heavy infantry, with missile launchers, that kind of thing. It's just going to be a bit too risky. And um, out in the midfield, again, they're going to be very expensive. You're going to have a bit of a stunted list as a result, and you're going to feel the inadequacy of bolts in that sort of setup. But you are going to be able to deploy a fair way out. It's just not going to be great if you're taking second turn. A single bolt Hannibal and Senior Massacre, well, that's not bad. Senior Massacre can actually help you out quite a lot with his um, clouds, his grenades, and he adds that midfield uh, close combat presence. Um, the bolt's only 4-2 speed coming along with you. Um, again, I feel like it's going to be an all or nothing thing. You can try it out if you like. It's an interesting link team, but I don't feel like it's as committal. It's as committed as that big A team. Two bolts plus Hannibal plus Valkyrie plus Senior Massacre. So this is a variation of the, of the super core that I'm going to be talking about later in the video. But by taking two bolts in there, I don't know, guys. Um, the bolts are still quite expensive. They still feel like they could use an HMG. If you're running the bolt with the Spitfire out there, again, I feel like it's a wasted opportunity to have that Orc Trooper in your team, and I'll talk about why the Orc Trooper is better later on, but just briefly, it's because you want to maximize what you're doing with such a huge investment, and having one model in there with Ballistic Skill 14 to go up to Ballistic Skill 17, and having that long-range HMG, whereas all of the other Link Team members can, can actually deal with the short range a lot better, strikes me as more effective. I'm not saying that the two bolt link team is much worse, but um, we'll talk about bolts soon. I mean, they provide some utility. It's going it's to be a very different kind of list. If you're dedicated to playing a foreign company, I'd encourage you to, to give it a go. You're going to be getting bored of the same list, so try a lot of different lists, and at some point try out the double bolt, Hannibal Valkyrie, Senior Massacre, but I'm not feeling it. I'm not sort of emotionally attached to that link team. The, um, the final one, of course, where he includes either just one Bolt or one Orc Trooper, I feel like is the best. We'll talk about that list a little bit later, but um, there's some hidden utility in there, which, well, not so much hidden, but you've really got to analyze it and understand what you're doing before you make that leap to play that limited insertion list with your 10 orders plus Stratagos 1, strategic deployment, and a whole lot of toys and tools to use. He's an interesting trooper. Biometric visor, it's not going to come up that much. Hyperdynamics is is interesting. Um, he doesn't have a flash pulse by the look, so you're not going to be able to use his whip to defend face-to-face -face rolls, whereas uh, dodging may be better on Fizz 14 if he's by himself. A lot of the time, though, at uh, Ballistical 12 with the Link Team, you're going to be defending with the, the, the rifle. 
so hyperdynamics isn't going to come up a huge amount. Shock immunity is very important with his NWI, making him effectively a two-wound trooper, but of course you can't take two wounds flat out, otherwise he's removed. Um, BS-12, sometimes he's going to be the one um, handling that range between, say, 16 and 24 inches, around about that range. But again, um, we're going to want to have an Orc Trooper do most of the shooting. We're going to want to have, like, um, one of the, the boarding shotgun people, the multi-rifle people, handle the close-range stuff. Um, Hannibal's not so much there for his gun, but for his special abilities, and um, simply to allow you to fulfill that requirement of creating that big link team. Very interesting leader. Okay, Kaplan. Kaplans uh, have been around in Infinity for a while. Uh, they were a mercenary trooper that you could take in the QK, Sectorial Kapukalki from um, Hakaslam. I never saw them on the battlefield all that much. Uh, they are good because of Mimetism BS-12, so that, that's very strong, but it's priced way up there, and uh, this is not a model that's really kept up with the power creep of Infinity. Uh, it's got a decent arsenal, you know, you snuck in the blitzens and things in there, but overall they are kind of pricey. What I, what I find significant though is that you can put two of them with Lax Me, and by doing that you've got the option um, to run something like the Multi Sniper plus the Harris with a combi, uh, Harris Spitfire actually, and then you throw Lax Me in there, and by putting her in a Harris team, you are doing the minimum required to give her burst two in her picture. So as you're moving forward with the Kaplans, you know, protecting her, you might be able to fire that picture, throw the Cybermines down, and get a bit more value out of her without having to commit her to a five-man link team. Laxmi is a very strong character because for 34 points, she's doing all of the good stuff that a normal hacker can do um, in terms of assisted fire and, you know, the um, hack transport or whatever she's got access to, control jump but also playing the role of the killer hacker in the sense that she's got that Meister upgrade, she's got great willpower, she's got the pitcher and the cyber mines uh, and the submachine gun to assist the two Kaplans by covering the short range stuff. Back to the Kaplans for a moment though, uh, the thing about this link team is that even though you're only Bishop List Skill 12, the extra burst helps and mimetism makes up for it really, so you're able to outshoot a lot of opponents and you're not really breaking the bank with them, so after you've spent 93 points on these three models, you should still have a fair amount left for quite a, a robust list to protect them. Still, at the end of the day, it's just three troopers that start in your deployment zone that don't have mark of state, don't have any particularly super special rules. We're not seeing anything on the level of jammers and symbiomates and fatality level two. They are just decent. So uh, this may be a Harris team that you might like to try. What I wouldn't recommend is just taking a single Kaplan in, them, in there by himself with no backup and not participating in a link team. He's just not really good enough to fulfill any of the roles in terms of arrows or sweeping, you know, aggressive attacking duties. Just quickly, they can also go in there with Avicenna instead. And again, we talked about Avicenna. What is she providing? What is she? What value is she bringing? Well, if she's fighting with her NWI and her, her rifle or whatever she's got, I don't feel like she's quite worth the points or quite, you know, the, the model that you want to use for those orders that are a very, very valuable resource. If she's just sitting back doctoring, well, you know, again, the Dactari can be doing that and um, putting her in with the Kaplan link team, well, she's just as expensive as they are anyway, and you could always just take a third Kaplan and put a Dactari in there. Whereas Luxme adds something to them that synergizes them with them a bit more as she moves out in the midfield and takes advantage of advantage of the position that you know she sets up with them so that's that's really the only uh, application of Kaplan's that I would consider we've already started talking about Laxmi let's keep going with her BTS 6 and Maestro means that with that picture she can be just as deadly as some of the the big hackers out there in the game Kurnow and maybe uh, the Drews hacker and the the team that fires the pitcher and just things like that um, she's she's not a bad choice Mimetism uh, is nice. Mine layer for a cyber mines is really good. People very rarely have time to go and plant a cyber mine somewhere, but with her ability, she can start the game with either a pitcher or a cyber mine, as I understand it, out in the field already. So don't forget to do that. Willpower 14 makes her a really decent hacker. And yeah, um, she can fight a little bit. Um, she can do a lot of hacking. Um, but it's yes, I, I find that it's just really great that she can actually fulfill the role of doing the support wear stuff as well as the offensive things. 
Only problem really is that there's no Bulleteer or Arushi or anything. You'd have to be going for like a Pathfinder if you're going to be um, attacking offensively. Sorry, I meant Peacemaker. I meant pe Peacemaker. My only problem with the Peacemaker is that it's strong if you go first, but not as strong if you go second. And even if you are going first, I mean, a Bulleteer could have caught up with it with one move to get it up to the mechanized uh, deployment position midfield anyway. So its main draw is the um, little orc spot, and you're trying to get close to enemy lines, you may get hacked as you do so, and if the terrain's not right, you may run into AROs that just cripple you. So um, it's not the most reliable bot in 100% of games. There are gonna be times where it just really shines. You move in there, you move around corners, you attack with both the orc spot and the shotgun or the spitfire, and you kill some dreams. But it's, it's just a bit situational, I feel. Not my favorite bot. If you're running it though, have Laxmi back there for assisted fire plus, you know, the offensive stuff. You can use the repeater provided by the uh, Peacemaker. It does have a repeater, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You can use the repeater provided by the Peacemaker to go and be offensive with your, uh, your maestro work. If you're not going to be doing all of that though, if you're not going to be doing a range of things, I wouldn't even bother taking a hacker. If you're not gonna be putting assisted fire or control to jump up very much, wouldn't even bother. Or if it's just control jump and that's all you really want a hacker for, may as well just go for the Securitate hacker. Speaking of Securitates, you can take as many of these guys as you want. They are a bit pricier than say Fusiliers or Alguaciles, that kind of thing. Um, the wonderful thing about Securitates is veteran level 1, so when you're going across the battlefield to complete those enemy deployment type missions, you can avoid those jammers and you can pick up you know, beacons and bits and pieces and do that. Bliss skill 12 makes them very useful for that HMG or multi-sniper or foyerbark, whatever, you know, pick your poison there. And willpower 14, great for the lieutenant options. So, Unless you're going to be running the Hannibal Limited Insertion Link, I would strongly recommend forming a defensive link team, not out of, you know, bolts or rock troopers or anything, but securitates, and pop in two or three CSUs in there. As I'll show you later, I quite like taking three securitates and three um, CSUs, rolling up the, um, the metachemistry, and then later on deciding when you move out which guys to take with you in your expedition. So securitates really solid. Um, I think they're appropriately priced. And again, if you are going to be using control jump, assisted fire, you can always just take the hacker. Um, what I considered doing though was just taking one HMG, one lieutenant, and then either a paramedic or just your basic normal securitate, possibly a repeater, maybe just a normal securitate, the rest CSUs, and just leaving it at that. If you've got points to spare um, for heavy weapons, maybe pop in the foyerbuck or the multi-sniper. But yeah, um, you can get a lot done with just one HMG and a couple of guys there being veterans, being um, you know the lieutenant option, and um, pretty solid, if you ask me. War cores, um, try not to forget that war cores are available to two for some reason. The press is more interested in what happens with the foreign company, it seems, and they've sent two correspondents out to cover the battlefield. War cores uh, are definitely worth it for three points. Obviously, if they're available to two total, you wouldn't want to take like 30 of them, because then some idiot with total immunity just comes through and you can't damage them but with two war cores out in the field that's two annoying flash pulses they're still cheap as chips you can still spend the command token to turn the irregular into a regular so all of the the things that were true about war cores being good before are still good uh, in terms of there being two of them available i'll say it once more if they were availability total or availability five i wouldn't necessarily fill my my list up with them but a second one uh, is definitely something to consider if you've got spare points. Akalis. So, of the drop troopers available, um, the Cube Jaeger or the Akali, I prefer the Akali. If it was between this guy and the new Cadmus, or between this guy and a Tiger Soldier, between this guy and a Raziat, um, I don't think that he's one of the better AD troopers in the game, just because he's just so plain, he's so no frills. List of Skill 13 is really good, but, you know, Tiger Soldier's got that, and he's also got Mimetism, right? These guys are appropriately priced. Um, they've got a good range of guns. My favorite profile here is the Spitfire, but quite often I won't have the points for the Spitfire, so I'll, I'll put in a combi rifle or a boarding shotgun again, and uh, just as good. This faction, I feel like, is missing a lot of great fast attack options, so... Take him if you've got a, a regular hacker there. He's, he's definitely uh, not going to be a, a terrible choice by any means. It's just that AD can be a little bit unreliable sometimes. 
Anyway, not too much new to say about the Akali. I mean, all of the same things that were true about of him in, in, in about him in Pan Oceania still play true in the sectorial. He's not specifically different. There's no new synergy unless I'm missing something. So that's the Akali. Bolts. So bolts have shown up in my YouTube videos a number of times in the past. And I've always talked about how bad they are. I think uh, Corvaspelli is slowly making them more and more viable and they're slowly rising to a point where maybe one day they'll become acceptable. But let's just revisit the, the tried and true, the old sort of argument here that they start in your deployment zone, the 4-2 speed. They are Blissical 13, but not too much else in terms of winning face-to-face -face roles. You know, you put one guy up there with your, your missile launcher or your multi-sniper, sure, he's pretty good defensively, but then other people are doing that with their tanko missile launcher, which is much better at uh, surviving and uh, being revived later, uh, and you're getting the same blister skill out of it. If you're taking a, a whole group of bolts, well, it's going to be very expensive. Bolts cannot be a core link team in the sectorial. They can only be part of other larger link teams. So it's a matter of whether we add them to... Hannibal's crew, right? Whether we send a bolt along or we send an orc trooper or whatever. Taking a single bolt by himself in this army list, questionable. Um, the chain of command option strikes me as a maybe. If you're willing to, willing to pay that full 27 points, then you don't have to be as worried about losing Hannibal when you push out there with your limit insertion run, okay? Uh, the killer hacking device for 21 points, well... That's kind of okay, but for Willpower 12, um, I'd prefer taking the Zero Killer Hacker for that. Because even though this guy's got BTS 6, the Zero Killer Hacker is going to win more face-to-face -face rolls with Surprise Attack and with his um, higher Willpower and his ability to sort of pick the fights coming out of Marcus State. And uh, he's going to be all round a better specialist for pressing buttons because he's out in the midfield, whereas this guy's back in the deployment zone with 4-2 speed. Veteran level 1 is good. Uh, especially in the whole jammer environment, but we have the securitates to do that job, so the near, near terror bolt's not really as needed. I think I'll stop there, I'll stop beating them up. Um, you know, you guys can play them if you want to use the drop bears and all of that, but really, if you want to try and make bolts work, go and play Neo Terra Capitoline um, Army from, from, from Pano. I think for this sectorial, bolts aren't really going to be your first purchase. Kriza Borax. So this guy is a very popular model in Nomads. This sectorial gets to use him. If you're wanting a model to try and deal with their TR bot or their TO sniper or their guy on a link team, there are a few choices more apt for it than this guy. Bliss skill 13 plus full auto level 2 and the HMG and the armor and the wounds um, is very convincing. I like to say, well, can't the Securitate HMG just do it? Securitate HMG's BS 15 5 dice, whereas this guy's BS 13 5 dice, but the negative 3 from full auto, so the odds, the stats are kind of close. It's just, this guy can take more punishment if you lose and, you know, have to take a wound. He is expensive. He's not really fitting to my personal style. I think a lot of you out there will want to play him, though, so... Definitely recommended if you're an Infinity player and you're just going to go balls to wall committed foreign company and that's that's all you're going to play and you want to do that for a year, then include one of these guys in your collection because he's going to show up sometimes. My preference, I would rather stick with the other ways of doing it. I'd stick with the Security HMG or even a Sierra Drone Bot with Assisted Fire. Just the cheaper options for doing that. Um, the Kreeza though, he hits hard. Um, he's very tough. Um, so play him well, um, have a bit of fun with him. I don't particularly like the multi-rifle versions, SMG, because um, his job is to stay in your deployment zone or near to it and shoot things at long range and just obliterate them with that superpower. Orc Troopers, on the other hand, if you're taking a single Orc Trooper in your army, that's questionable because uh, if you're really going to be following that role, the Kreezer Borax is just better at it, and the extra points you spend on the Kreezer are definitely worth it over this guy. The interesting thing about the Orc Trooper, though, is that he can join some link teams. So I think that's where we need to focus our attention for this particular sectorial. Fireteam Core. You don't have to, apparently, um, link him up with other people, as far as I can see here. The only thing is, if you're going to go pure Orc Troops and take all five of them, then... You know, why is is the question there. You've got a 10 order list with 5 orcs 
and they look pretty strong, but compare that to, say, Invincible Army, which can take five Zuyongs, and they have an additional four or five orders from Tactical Awareness above and beyond what the Orcs can do. They have Deflector Level 2, you've only got Deflector Level 1. They've got um, a Hydeal, which can accompany them, you wouldn't. Uh, if you compare these guys to the Suryats, for example, with Kornak and the Suryats and the Raktorak, well, they're immune to jammers and they're more resistant to hacking uh, compared to the Orc Troopers. And they've got the four tactical awareness. So you're always going to be feeling jealous. Like, even compare them to the military orders. You take Joan of Arc and the Santiago Killer Hacker and the whoever else might be in there. And even that Link team has more potential than the Orc Troopers. They just become very boring if you focus on them in that way. Would you take a single Orc Trooper in this list just for the sake of it? I, I just don't think so. I'm not seeing it. If it's just for that, that ARO clearing potential with the eight HMG, I would recommend going with the Kreezer for that, or just sticking again with the Security and the Link Team, or just your plain old TR bot with Assisted Fire is going to be um, a more cost-effective of, of role for that. If you're going to be running just a multi-rifle or boarding shotgun, my argument to you is why not use Valkyrie for that role? We're going to be talking about Val Valkyrie later where she's priced similarly to the Orc Trooper, but she's able to take two wounds as well, and she's got total immunity. She's got this amazing close-range burst potential with grenades, the close combat, that kind of thing, heavy pistol. Orc Trooper, same sort of points, and all you're getting really is the extra couple of points of armor and the extra couple of points of Blissa skill. I would really rather go with Valkyrie for the short-range stuff, and then long-range stuff, we already talked about it. The thing about the Orc Trooper, though, is that he would be in your list if you are running the Hannibal uh, setup, and uh, the HMG, I think, is our choice there. And I, I think I'll leave it to later to discuss why you take the HMG, but for now, we're not going to be seeing a lot of Orc Troopers in the Sectorial, but we're not never going to see them. We are going to see them uh, sometimes. If you were going to go and buy... A whole bunch of models to use for your next foreign company army. I would recommend picking up one Orc Trooper. And make sure the model's just got a gun that looks like an HMG. Um, or even just the HMG model. And just have that hanging around. Because he's going to show up sometimes. Iguana Squadron. So this is a tag that I don't like very much. I know that some of you guys do like it. But let me give my reasons why I don't particularly like him. What's the job of a tag? The job of a tag for some people is going to be to move out around the battlefield and shoot things with your Blister Skill 14. Well, the Kreezer Borak does that more effectively for fewer points because it's got uh, full auto level 2. So it's got an additional dice and penalizes them by 3. The Kreezer Borak is similarly um, well armored, you know, similarly well armored. And uh, again, way fewer points. So if that's the job you're trying to do, you know, have a secure date in the link team, have the Kreezer Borak, have blah, 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 blah. You don't have a multi-HMG, just a regular HMG, mind you. The other role for a tag, and this is my preferred role for a tag, is to defend and pop off your AROs and attack later in the game. So you're hungering down behind cover, and you've got this massive armor, and they may waste an entire turn's worth of water shooting you and barely do anything, or reduce you to unconscious state, and you revive yourself with the Clockmaker. This guy just can't do it very well because he's only got an HMG. He's only inflicting one wound at a time. It's not an explosive you know, burst, so people can move around and take a hit from him and go into NWI, and he just can't really do much more than that. Also, he's only armor 6, whereas other tags are usually armor 8, armor 9, that kind of thing. So he is going to take wounds. If somebody just sets up an HMG with MSV2 in smoke, repeatedly shoots him, he is going to go down. And then there's the fact he's only got two structure points. Yes, he does have two more wounds after that with the Iguana Operator, but you're running the risk of that ejection system sending your Iguana Operator somewhere that you know, don't expect. Are you really going to risk that with your 71 point investment having taken a couple of wounds because you're only on a six? The pilot gets ejected somewhere, it's still the enemy turn, and they may have line of sight to him where he's just in, you know, in completely out in the open, only armor three, he's only got an HMG at Blister Skill 12. They shoot him a couple more times, he dies, and then it's all over for the iguana. Lastly, there is the repeater that he comes with, which uh, people find really fascinating. Do you really want that, though? Do you really want to move him out there and try and use Laxmi to um, you know, get people with her maestro? The problem with that is that the enemy hacker might be better. The enemy hacker might beat Laxmi, and then it might start hacking. It might bring another hacker to start hacking the iguana. I don't really feel you want that as a liability and run that risk. 
it might be a bit more relevant in a nomads list that has a whole bunch of hackers. You got the merry problems and the interventors and stuff there. And I feel that's what the iguana is more designed for, more so than um, just Lux me, for example, just hanging out back. I'm um, sorry to say. Okay, uh, Clipper Drone Bots, Fugazi, Pathfinders, Mule Bots, uh, Sierra Drone Bots. What I want to say about these guys is that sadly the Sectorial only gets availability one on all of them. You can't take more than one of these remotes, which is sad. You go and look at the Shark Company, availability three on the Flash Pulse Bots, availability two on the Mule Bots. I mean, I can't believe that these guys are even restricted to availability one on the mule bots. That's just sad. Every other uh, sectorial can take two minesweepers or two baggage bots or whatever they've got. These guys is only one and that punishes them because you can't go and make that nice robust list which has 16, 17, 18 orders and be really efficient about it because you don't have those cheerleaders backing you up. You can only take so many CSUs, the lowest points value is 11. What you'd love to be able to do is have several 8-point flash pulse bots at the back uh, pumping out those regular orders, and it's just sad that you, you can't really do more than that. We talked about the Peacemaker. I don't particularly like it. If you're going to be playing a lot of foreign company, you're probably going to be trying it at some point. But again, weaker in second turn play than in first turn play. Um, has a few problems when you move out with it. Um, but if you know what you're doing, uh, these guys can be game winning if you do get across there and you're getting some great shots with your orc spot spitfire combo or orc spot heavy sh shotgun combo moving in and forcing arrows from the same target. Crocmen uh, have always been one of the better uh, infiltrating TO units. They are very, very strong, and you should be trying to crutch hard on them if you're trying to win with Foreign Company. I would recommend taking one in every list. I, I really mean that. Uh, a lot of the time, you'd take the Ford Observer profile, but in this particular case, playing the Sectorial, I actually like the Multi Sniper better, simply because you're going to have access to Zeros who are going to do the job of the midfield button pressing. They may as well. They're not really as good as the Croc Man in terms of fighting. And this guy can play that that role of either AROing them with a brutal multi sniper surprise, you know, hidden deployment kind of thing, or deploying further out and simply using burst two in the active turn to go after things. This is a sectorial which is missing a lot of very powerful um, broken stuff and attacking options. You can make up for it somewhat with that Crocman X Visor out in the midfield, finding those really good attacking opportunities. You still have the interpersonal minds along with the multi sniper, and I think at 38 points he's still worth it because he's going to be the focus a lot of of, of a lot of your turns. He's going to be arrowing, he's going to be attacking, he's going to be in the thick of it. He's really going to be making use of his good stats. So Crocman, I reckon. Um, if you're not going to take the multi sniper again, the uh, Ford Observer choice is great. Even the mine layer choice is pretty good because you'll be putting a camo marker out in the midfield while he'll be in hidden deployment and your opponent will assume that that camo marker is a zero. They may run into it to try and expose the zero and get hit by the mine, which can be quite a powerful play. Moving on to the zeros, well, you get two of them. And uh, some people call them zeros because they have zero armor and zero BTS, but they're so cheap. Really recommend taking two of these guys in just about every list as well. And one of them is going to be either the Ford Observer or the Killer Hacker. You may like the deployable repeater profile with the e Mauler, especially if you're playing Luxme. Uh, the Mine Layer, again, very defensive, can be good for protecting Hannibal's Link Team. But again, my choices would actually be um, the Multi Sniper plus the Ford Observer, or uh, the Multi Sniper plus the Killer Hacker if you don't already have Luxme in there. And I say this because this is a sectorial that's not going to be spending a lot of SWCs unless you're running the Kreezer Borak. If you're running the Kreezer Borak, I'd say take just one sniper between the Zeros and the Crocman. But if, if you're like me, and if you're going to keep the SWCs low by just taking some Securitate heavy weapons, maybe a Crocman multi-sniper, then you can add a Zero multi-sniper in there for another one, and then take an Akali Spitfire or something like that. And with the Zero and the Crocman working together, you can cover off some long fire lanes, you can take advantages of sniper towers out in the midfield, stay hidden for a while, wait for those opportunities, and then cover those various different angles. If you don't, you become a bit too predictable where your opponent can see where your big defensive link team is, you can see where, the, where your small, uh, slow moving stuff is, 
and outmaneuver you and take up positions that they wouldn't otherwise be able to take if you weren't being able to box them in and cover off the various different lanes and angles with your infiltrating snipers. So even though he's Blister Skill 11, um, you're only paying 26 points for a guy with a multi-sniper who has marker state. I think it's worth it. Really good trooper, and I'm glad that you've got two of them. But again, the sectorial's missing so much good stuff. You want to be able to grab the good profiles while you can. Going now to the Bakunin Uberfall Commando. The, I think they previously were only available in Nomads and um, Bakunin. And for some reason, they work for Foreign Company. And um, I need you guys to understand that uh, this is a very strong unit choice now. And although you may find the models a bit outdated and they may seem a little bit dumb and gimmicky, you probably should be playing them if you're actually serious about winning with Foreign Company. And uh, part of that's because anything with total immunity at the moment is very, very strong because it ignores flash pulses and a range of other things. Secondarily, because they provide eclipse grenades uh, and you're not really getting that anywhere else apart from possibly Senior Massacre. Yeah, Senior Massacre. But with these guys, you may be Star for Orders elsewhere. They have uh, that extreme impetuous to be able to move up the field and then they're going, to impet they're going to use their regular order to move up the field. They're very fast. And you're going to be able to solve problems that other models aren't going to be able to solve in the sectorial. Putting down Eclipse Grenades out into a midfield where your opponent's got that, you know, Varuna, Kamau Sniper in the Link team that your rest of your army is just too afraid to go after. Well, you plonk down the Eclipse Grenades and then you move out to the objectives or you cross around to a point where you can get in range. At 21 points, they are very cheap. I realized recently that the uh, Army 6 Builder allows you to actually reduce the number of Pupniks you include. So you could have one Chimera, one Pupnik, if you desperately wanted to save a couple of points. I wouldn't recommend actually doing that. Having the extra Pupniks is very, very good. But if you've got that perfect army list and it's 301 points, you can deduct one Pupnik and just have two of them there and still have a legal list. So don't forget about that trick. So Pupniks, um, I know a lot of you guys were angry that I didn't include them in the video about who the best close combat um, units are. Partly didn't do that just because I wanted to focus it on individuals and this, this is a gang, you know, it's the group of them that makes them powerful in close combat. Just one of them by itself wouldn't be strong, but with when you get going with all four of them, the uh, burst bonus and the link team bonus you get um, from G Synchronized is extremely strong. So if you're clever, if you have a good positional awareness, if you understand Infinity very well, it's not going to be hard for you, to, for you to get them to a point where they move up the field, continue throwing Eclipse Grenades down, you come to your very juicy target, you can use Climbing Plus to get up and over onto something, and then in that final order where all four of them move into close combat with the enemy, they are just going to get absolutely screwed, aren't they? It doesn't matter whether it's an Avatar or a Yotam or even some of the more powerful close combat specialists. You move in with four guys and it's the Chimera attacking with CC21 and I think Burst 4 with a viral close combat weapon, Physical 13 plus the bonuses and Natural Born Warrior. It just gets crazy, crazy strong. I mean, they're going to beat just about anything in the game, whether it's Mushashi or, or, or what, um, just because of the, the, the sheer burst, right? Um, I'm wondering whether Martial Arts Level 5 counters them, but uh, that's a philosophical thought for another day. It's not going to come up very much. I would definitely strongly recommend playing them in your foreign company list uh, because of the versatility and the utility and the tool that they bring that nothing else in this sectorial really does. Senor Massacre. Uh, he's cool. Um, again, I wouldn't really play him by himself but he is able to join your link team and when he does join the link team he is the member of the a team the specialist squad that can throw the grenades uh the eclipse grenades i mean so as you're moving out with your big limited insertion team with valkyrie and laxmi and the orc and everything like that um, the role he plays is really to get those eclipse grenades down uh, to cover those lanes where otherwise you'd have to spend a whole you know a couple of orders dealing with that um, missile launcher and a, a link team that you didn't want to bother dealing with and get uh, get into a closer closer range. In terms of close combat, he's comparable to Valkyrie. Uh, Valkyrie, I find, is more interesting because she's got Berserk as well. Um, but the thing with Senior Masca is that he's got the EM close combat weapon. So if you were making that mad dash to try and take out their Marut or their Avatar, 
you're getting the eclipse grenades down. Let's say you get there with only one order left and they're all moving around the corner. I'd use Massacre as the point man there because the EM close combat weapon against a target like that is probably going to be more effective than the uh, explosive, believe it or not. Especially if you're only getting it, getting it two models in close combat because immobilizing them and isolating them is more important than inflicting, say, four or five armor saves, which they may be able to pass with a high armor value. Otherwise, it's going to be Valkyrie, you know, almost always. And, and even then, Valkyrie, I mean, come on. She's going to be using MD, MBW and uh, Berserk and Explosive and Physical 14 or whatever the hell she is, 14. We'll talk about her in a sec, but yeah. Senior Massacre, I like the boarding shotgun profile in with the Link team. Um, again, if you have the Senior Massacre pro, uh, model and you just want to chuck him into your list, he's not going to do a lot, a lot of, a lot of games, because he's staying around in deployment zone. Your opponent can you know, track where he's moving and deal with him later, and he's got to get 26 points worth out of his profile. He's not a very good shooter. And uh, to get over there and make, make, make good of his EM grenades, he's just going to need to, to run so far. But hey, I mean, if he's going to be coming along with a link team that's already forward deployed because of strategic deployment and has 11 orders to spend on it and you're shooting your guns anyway and just moving closer with every order, you'll eventually get into range and Senior Massacre may well throw an EM grenade or an Eclipse grenade or fire his boarding shotgun or get into close combat. And at 26 points, he's really worth having in the team. Lastly, it's my favorite. It's Valkyrie. Um, a lot of people on the internet seem to have said that the new Valkyrie model that's come out in the um, in the pre-order set for Operation Wildfire isn't very good. I don't know what you're talking about. I think the new Valkyrie model is superb. I think she's amazing. I might just play Foreign, uh, foreign Company just because of that model. Valkyrie is so interesting and so cool. She comes from Aristaya. She has Frenzy, but again, it's not tripped straight away. And in the Link team, it's not going to matter that much. I think she's the only member of the A-Team squad, apart from Laxmi, that you might take by herself. And the important thing here is that even though she's overcosted for her abilities and stats, total immunity in particular is the one thing that makes her really interesting and viable and uh, considerable for a list. She's the kind of model that can walk across the table and not have to waste orders ducking and dodging against flash pulses. She's the kind of model that can come around there in full view of a missile launcher and not die to it because of total immunity and close the gap, get into range to berserk something that's really, really crucial for her to berserk. She has physical 14 for her grenades. Once she gets up close, she's uh, throwing grenades in ARO or offensively or spec firing them in a way that is quite crushing, to be honest. In that link team, she's going to be hitting on 20s so auto hitting with grenades with two rolls don't forget that guys you use your physical as your blister skill stat you still add plus three for a five man link team and you're going to throw another plus three in there for close range so imagine that you come around the corner your opponent's got a mob of people you're throwing fizz um effectively 20 on two dice the grenades all landing everybody under it takes the splash that's brutal you might even uh, do a coordinated order where she throws a grenade and um, a, a Senior Massacre throws as well. Well, I'm not too sure if you can mix up the ammo types, but it's an interesting one to consider. But yeah, getting into close combat is where things get really fun. So NBW, Natural Born Warrior, means that you negate their martial arts if they've got any. So that's when you use it. If they've got MA3 or something, you'd use it. But if they don't, and usually they won't, it's a plus three to use. So you CC24. Berserk will take that up to CC 30. So on a 10 plus you're critting and um, otherwise you're just adding 10 to your dice roll, right? And it's a normal roll. So they're guaranteed to take an explosive CC hit with physical 14. If they're attacking you back, like you walk into close combat with the avatar and he attacks you back and you're berserking, you both take hits, but your total immunity is going to render any double action as just one hit. So you take one wound and you bash him. Probably Avatar's going to use the Sepsator, but you can imagine situations where Valkyrie walks to the edge of the wall, Avatar's right around the edge of line of sight, the Avatar is forced to do a change facing or reset, that's how the game works, so your first order forces that, that, that ARO out, then with your second one you come around into close combat, and then you spend a new order to just start hacking with that explosive close combat weapon. And um, your odds of taking down a model like the Avatar are, are rather good, you know, you're doing one wound, and he's got armor 9, um, but he's got two more saves against Fizz 14. And then you will get a follow-up attack, because you will have only taken one wound at most from his uh, response. So um, even against a tough target like that, she's going to be quite effective. 
don't forget, explosive close combat weapon is going to be anti-material. So she is the model you're going to be wanting to use for looting and sabotaging, for blowing up that AC2 objective. Please don't forget, though, that unfortunately, um, she's not immune to jammers with total immunity. So it might be a job more for maybe the securitates with veteran. Um, if you can get a paramedic over to grab some decharges, that might be the way to go. CC13 is not great. So, yeah, if you can take out the jammers, that's much better because Valkyrie can then do it. But I think that Valkyrie is just the one model that doesn't necessarily need to be in that, that five man link team. She can be, and she's good in it, but I like her. I think that she's so interesting. If she did not have total immunity, I'd say, sorry guys, but not quite good enough. Just, just not quite good enough at closing the distance, getting across the table and getting into her short range where she excels. But because of that rule being so overpowered at the moment, I think she's worth it. All right, we're coming to the end of the video now. I just want to talk about the two army lists in particular that I think are interesting to me and that I, I would play. So the two different army lists are as follows. I like this with Valkyrie in group one with a multi-rifle. She is going to be an amazing point man or point woman. Um, and it's going to be great to involve her in coordinated orders as you're moving out with other people like the Akal or something like that. Um, she comes with with that model for efficiency and then she strikes from the midfield does some attacks the Bakunin Uberfall Commando again there's going to be some problems that only the Chimeras and Pupniks can solve the Eclipse Grenades are going to be so useful for protecting you you for going into objectives against those deadly arrows the Kyle Commando you may as well I think uh, walking on the side of the table on turn two or three sometimes if you can't get on turn one um, is going to be very strong uh, since there are another, no other um, options to cover that mid-range side of the table with your Spitfire. You're not going to be going around with a Rushi or a Bulletier, so the Carl's going to be doing the job. The Link Team, like I talked about, nice and cheap. Plenty of orders there, plenty of specialists. The Lieutenant's Willpower 14. You've got that HMG, so the Dactari is backing him up. So Blissical 15 HMG with 5 dice is going to kill most targets. If it doesn't, you might be able to doctor him back. It's not the best thing in the game, but it's nice and cheap. Mulebot, um, Crocman with the multi-sniper and zero multi-sniper like we talked about. Zero killer hacker, because you're going to need at least one hacker to be able to take the bots. And I haven't opted for a um, security eight, um, hacker in this list. There are things you can drop if you do want the security eight hacker, which can be a good exchange. Um, Fugazi there, of course, and the double Warcore at the back. This is great because Warcores are very nice defensively, and if you really want to, have a great turn. If you've managed to get a great position set up with your Crocman, you can spend your command tokens to turn those Warcores orders into real orders for the Crocman to use for a seven order run around the flank with your sniper rifle, which can be very, very strong. So this list is a large list. It's got some tools. It's not the best list I've ever seen. Valkyrie, again, 40 points. You're paying a lot for her. But this is the kind of list I would play to try and win with Foreign Company. The other one is the limit insertion list with Hannibal's team. You take Hannibal, Valkyrie, Senior Masker, Laxmi, and the Orc with HMG. I know you can take so many different fifth choices there with the Bolt, with the Drop Bears, the Hacker, the Multi Sniper. There's the other Orc Trooper with the Deflector and helping Laxmi out. But I'm sorry to be boring, guys. But if you do not take the Orc HMG, here's what's going to happen to you. You're going to get into spots, even with strategic deployment, where there's going to be that guy in the distance that you're going to need to gun, need a gun to deal with. You're going to need a model with as much blister skill as possible, and as much burst as possible, and with as high damage as possible, and the best choice is going to be that HMG. You can't really rely on Hannibal with his BS-12 multi-marksman rifle for that kind of job. You're going to need something with decent firepower, and none of the other options, not the Feuerbach, not the Spitfire, is going to be appropriate. Now I can hear some people saying, well, if, if you take strategic deployment and you take a bolt, you can actually go even further out into the table. Couple of reasons I don't really like that. Sometimes you're going to be going second and you're not going to be wanting to deploy your very vulnerable link team way out in the midfield. So that ability is wasted. Also, um, even though you may take the, the bolt with uh, Spitfire, for example, out in that midfield with good blister skill, his blister skill is lower than the Orc Trooper. You know, um, the orc can still hang back and shoot with that adequate range and still do a better job. And he's got two wounds and he's got the armor. 
so just trust me on this one guys it's it's the orc trooper or nothing um, again you may want the deflector blah 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 but if you're going to be investing your entire game your entire strategy all of those orders in that in that very important push you're going to be wanting to take one hmg in there somewhere trust me guys it's it's crucial so that link team intrigues me Again, I think if you flatly compare them to the Invincible Army mega order list with, you know, all of the um, NCO and tactical awareness, they can't move as far and their guns may be um, not as good in some ways. But the thing is, that Invincible Army link team doesn't have the close combat monster potential that this link team has with Massacre and, and Valkyrie in there. This is a link team with grenades. So spec fire and close range grenades with massive fizz. Your other link teams don't have that. The Soviets don't have that. Yes, these guys are vulnerable to the jammers, but okay, most people are. The Heidel uh, with deflect level two and kill hacking device very strong for protecting these guys. But hey, Laxmi is also very strong with her maestro. The one thing that those other link teams don't have though is the smoke, and I think that's very really important. If you're going to have an eleven order turn and you're moving right up there, you might see a position where, so long as that one fire lane in the middle of the table is closed, you can get around the back side and start absolutely ripping their order pool and just gutting their cheerleaders with this rollout. And that may be something that you cannot achieve with the um, the Suryats or the um, Invincible Army Zuyongs because you know that there's a Noctifer missile launcher up there and you don't have the time to cautious move across the alleyway because uh, it might be quite a big alleyway. So having those Eclipse Grenades midfield might allow you to actually get that game-winning last few orders in at the end of that run to complete your threat range and just absolutely hammer them. So it's intriguing. I think it's viable. It's not the strongest thing out there, but I think it's actually really playable. If you know a lot about Infinity and you start to get good at it and you understand your list and you remember what your options are when you're out there. Really like taking two snipers that have infiltrate um, because you want to defend this list when you don't get to go first. You probably should go first if you're, if you're on the roll, but also if you manage to work your way into the corner of the table on their deployment zone, you've killed a few things around you, they're going to be swarming towards you with um, impetuous troops and guys like that and trying to box you in and outmaneuver you. That's when your snipers can defend the position of the A-team out on the corner. So you've got your, your boys positioned carefully to cover off those angles which are really in your opponent's side of the table strategically to um, save yourself a real headache. But you've still got a, uh, a zero to do the button pressing because that's something you're going to need to do later in the game once you've won the attrition uh, decisively. Pathfinder bot, again, um, sensors useful, all round useful bot for pressing buttons and that's not something you're going to be doing a lot of with your team who's primarily going to be focused on killing things. And of course, Daktari, that's just uh, really important because you can have the Zonbot helping out the Zero or the uh, or the Crocman with multi sniper in case it dies if it's near your deployment zone, and the other one's going to be there to revive the Orc Trooper if it goes down. So Daktari can't leave home without it. Very very important. So let me know what you think, guys. These two foreign company lists seem quite decent. They when, once you look at these particular lists, you certainly don't think the factions like the third worst faction in the game. They actually seem like they've got potential. It's a challenging sectorial to use, very char characterful low, and it gives me a lot of ideas for lists and painting and having a bit of fun on the tabletop. So I hope you enjoyed this one. This has been a strategic look at Foreign Company, and uh, we'll see you next time.